Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have this nail art tutorial for this fun floral stamping design that I did with lots of tips and tricks on how to do stamping. And I'm also going to be reviewing this clear stamper that I received from the Born Pretty store. They also sent me these stamping plates to review, which I'm really excited about. And I'll have a link to their website down below, as well as a 10% off code that you can use. The Born Pretty store is known for their inexpensive items and great quality. The stamping plate that I'll be using for this tutorial is this fantastic flower plate. Now here are two regular stampers that I have and have previously used. This one here on the right is a little squishier and a little softer and the one on the left is a little more firm. Now the one I like to use is one that's a little stickier and squishier and it seems to pick up the image quite well but the issue that I have with these stampers is that it's hard to get placement on the nail you have to look at weird awkward angles and it's just hard to get it straight and where you want it so whoever came up with this clear stamper idea was a complete genius so as soon as I saw one of these I knew I wanted one as you can see it's a little bit bigger than these other stampers which I think is nice because you have a bigger surface area but as you can see you can see right where you're going to place it on the nail. It's just see-through enough. Now when you get these stampers you have to do a little priming for them to work and that's what I've struggled with before and you can see I've done a little bit of that prep and priming and it's a little foggy and I'll talk about that here in a minute. Some tips and tricks on how to prime it without getting that foggy hazy look. Now with a regular stamper there was lots of videos and suggestions on using a very fine file to kind of buff down the shine so you have a little bit of a matte finish and that way it'll pick up the design a little better. And you can also use acetone and a cotton swab to rub along the surface of the top of the stamper to get it to prime. Now you're going to do that several times until you get it to pick up the way you want it. There's lots of videos and I'm not going to demonstrate that today but there's lots of videos on YouTube that go over that. Now with the clear stamper it's a little different. You can maybe learn from my mistakes. I filed it a little bit, I buffed it down, and I used acetone as well to prime this one because I was having a hard time having it pick up any images at all. And as I did a little more research I saw that some people had used a magic eraser and that doesn't cause that hazy cast over the top which can prevent you from seeing crystal clear. As you can see you can still see it but it's not as clear as it would be if I hadn't have used the acetone in the file. So the idea behind the magic eraser is that it will prime it without leaving that hazy cast. So if you have a clear jelly stamper that you have that hasn't been working and you want to try the magic eraser, I would go ahead and try that. I am going to do that on the next one that I purchase and I don't think I'll be doing the filing in acetone. I was a little frustrated. It took me a while to even get this to work. Those two things worked for me, but it was hazy. So like I said, try a magic eraser. Another thing that you're going to need to have is a card to swipe away the excess polish. Now I have a few of these that I've used. I have this one with the metal and it works well. It just tends to scratch my plates more than the plastic does so I don't like to use that as often. Then you can just use a credit card or an old card. I use my Panera card and that makes me miss Panera so much. They don't have it here in Utah. Ugh. Anyway. So I use that. This is my favorite one. It just came with one of my other stampers that I have and it's small and it works really well. And I will show you towards the end of the video how to use this scraper. Now another thing that's important with stamping is you want to use a polish that stamps well. Not all nail polishes are going to work for your stamping project. Now this is one polish that's specific to stamping and it does work well. I got it specific for that and they have several different colors that you can choose from. Even on the Born Pretty site they offer these. It will just take some testing to be able to see which polishes in your collection are good for stamping and which aren't. Now for this tutorial, I really wanted kimono over to work with this nail design and I tried and tried and tried and it just didn't work. And I thought I was having problems with the stamping, but it turns out it's just this polish was not going to work. And I was kind of bummed because I thought that would go so great with Gogo Geisha. And I'm just going to show you here an example of that. As you can see, I'm putting kimono over on the top, just at the very top, you put place your polish and then you swipe it away. And when you're swiping, you just want to do it softly. Don't push down too hard. And as you can see, I'm lightly rolling my stamper on it and it just really didn't pick up the polish at all. And I tried and tried and tried probably about 20 times because I really wanted it to work. 
um, and it just didn't but I just realized you know what this polish is not meant to be stamped so sometimes if you're having a hard time with stamping that's probably your issue I even tried it with this stamper and I just wasn't getting a good image and I can usually get a good image pickup with this stamper and I'm also going to show you here just without the clear stamper how difficult it is as you can see I'm trying to look and reach and look under to see what angle to put it at if I'm putting it in the right spot and even after all that I didn't get it where I wanted to and that's definitely one thing that I really love about the clear stamper. So now we've talked a little bit about preparing and prepping to be able to stamp. So now we're going to go through the tutorial and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks as we go along. And I just wanted to note that this nail design is featuring one of my favorite polish picks for 2016 for fall and it's Essie Go Go Geisha and each season I always pick 10 and do a nail design for each one so stay tuned for more in the future. So as you may have noticed my polish changed a little bit throughout the video because I was going to use kimono over and it didn't work so I switched to my nail stamping polish that's black and I think it turned out great. So I already stamped one nail and then I did my pinky black and then I did two coats of Gogo -Go Geisha on my other fingers. So I'm going to do some polish about two thirds of the way down of that nail that I've already stamped and I just think that gives it a great look. And I'll be using Essie Black Licorice for that detail. So I'm just going to use my regular SE brush to go down about two thirds of the way and try to get it as even as possible across the nail. And then I'll come back with a small brush and define that edge a little better. And as always, I'll have a list of all the products I'm using listed down below. Now it doesn't matter what order you do this in, you can wait and do this after you've done all your stamping, that's probably the best way, but I had just previously stamped these before I recorded it. So to get ready for stamping I'm going to get just a piece of paper and a couple paper towels just so that I don't ruin the surface of what I'm doing it on, and the paper towels are nice to wipe off the scraper. Now here are the supplies you're going to want to have handy. I have some cotton swaps for cleanup. I have my black nail polish, my stamping polish, a scraper, my plate, some cotton rounds, and my stamper, and some acetone in a little cup. Now you use acetone to prime your other regular stampers, but you're not going to want to continue to use that on the surface of your stamper. And so there's another method that you can use to clean that off to get it ready to stamp. The best thing to use is some tape or a lint roller. I don't have a lint roller, so I'm just gonna break off some of this tape. And I'm gonna take my clear stamper and I'm gonna clean the top off and get anything that's on the surface of that to make sure that I have a good surface for the polish to adhere to. You also wanna make sure that your stamping plate is clean, and that's what I use the cotton rounds or the Q-tips for, is to use acetone to clean that surface off. And now you're ready to stamp. You're just gonna put a little bit on top and then as you scrape, you're gonna pull that down and it's gonna pull the polish into the little crevices of that design. And I slowed this down to show you guys the technique, but you might wanna move a little quickly before the polish dries. So you just wanna use your scraper. You don't push down too hard and then you're gonna wipe it off on your paper towel and set that aside. You'll have your stamper handy and ready. And when you put it on, you wanna start on the side and roll gently. You don't wanna push down, you don't wanna put hard pressure on there. And I'm just stopping a minute to show you guys how good of an image that I had picked up. Now you will not want to waste any time when you're doing this. You want to go right into stamping your nail as soon as you're finished. So because of this clear awesome stamper you can see that you can see exactly where you want to place that on the nail. You're going to rotate to each side and pressing down a little firmly and you can hold it there for a little bit just to make sure you get it on the nail very well and carefully remove that and then you can press down with your finger any areas that have lifted up. I noticed that this stamping polish can kind of lift up a little bit but it's not too hard to push it back down. And then you just want to use a little brush and some acetone to clean that up and it kind of finishes off the edges that are sticking up as well when you go around it with the acetone. You can use a barrier if you want, if you don't want to have cleanup, but really honestly this stamping polish is very easy to clean up as you can see. And I think I got a good result with that image. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to move on to any other ones that I need to do. 
Now you want to do the same preparations to go back and do another nail. You want to make sure you clean off your stamping plate with acetone and a cotton swab really well. And then you also want to make sure that you use tape again to clean the top of your stamper before you stamp again. Now stamping really takes some patience at first if you're first trying to learn. I think if you stick to these tips and tricks that you'll be able to do it fine after you've practiced a little bit. So I've done all my stamping that I need to do so I'm going to go ahead and do this half moon on my thumb. I'm using this brush that I got from Wistonia that I really love to do the detail for that. When you're finished and you're sure everything has dried completely, you want to go ahead and do your fast dry top coat. Now when you apply this top coat over anything you've stamped, you want to make sure you don't go over the same area twice or it can smear it. I admit when I first got this stamper, I was a little frustrated because I didn't know how to use it. I couldn't get it to pick up, but now that I've really got a hang of it, I love it. It's going to be my go-to stamper and I'm really impressed. And that's it for the tutorial and the review. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks! <music>